<laughs> another one. Yes, of course. <laughs> you know, there are so few people. So. <laughs> I think it's I think it's a very similar answer. Um, the other the other thing that kind of comes up and knocks me, uh, but that feels like it, it feels more like an internal thing. I don't know if it's projected out. Is guilt and shame. And again, I feel it is a, you know, there's like a body sensation and there's some thoughts, but there's more of a, an old memory maybe within my body being brought up Catholic that might, <laughs> might have something to do with it. Mm. <coughs> well, it's, there are not so many Catholics in the United States, I guess. I was brought up in England, but I've been here for a while. Okay. Well, there are not so many Catholics in England either. Um, anyway, you see, I have an interview on, on the Catholics, um, not a political view. Um, so, I... teach uh, to Christians, and of course every Western being is a, is a Christian, whether he wants or not, because this is the spiritual tradition where these beings come from. So, the Catholic Church is the only Church which goes back to the source. See, all the others, they came later. Therefore, from an inner point of view, it's the most important, you see? It's important to uh, follow back this, this, the stream of the Catholic Church to the original teachings of Jesus Christ. So, guilt, of course, is, is a very powerful um, concept of which leads back to <coughs> religious misunderstandings of the Catholic Church. But there is also, of course, a, let's, let's say, an authentic origin of guilt, you see? Because guilt is the moment of the, the <coughs> is the moment of sin. So when in the Genesis, when Adam and Eve um, took a crop from, from the false tree, which they were offered by the snake, this was the moment of sin. And in the moment of sin, the original sin, leads in the next moment to guilt, you see? So, so guilt is not just a, a hostile feeling that works against joy and happiness, but it can be also regarded as a um, a feeling that <clears throat> can take you back very deep to original sin. The problem is, of course, that people on the surface they live, they also have also a very superficial relationship with guilt and they feel guilty about <coughs> all kinds of, you know, trivial things in personal life instead of understanding that guilt, that they, they should follow, they could follow guilt to, into the depth of the original sin. So, there is, which is a very important 
moment because it's the fall out of paradise. You see, what is this sin? What is the original sin which causes guilt? You see? If we understand that the, the, the sin is being repeated by the mind, you see, the original sin is not this way that we can say, oh, 2,000 years ago or 2 million years ago or whenever, the original sin happened and mankind fell out of paradise. No, the mind is repeating the sin unconsciously over and over in a human being, you see? It's not that this sin happened once in the past and then uh, this person had to deal with the guilt because of this one sin in the past. You see, this is a misunderstanding. The truth is that the, the mind is repeating the sin over and over, meaning daily, you see? Every meaning, possibly every, every second moment. So this is what is happening. And the sin, of course, is creating guilt. So if the sin is not being created, you see, the sin of separating yourself from God, if the sin is not being repeated, no guilt is being produced. It's so simple. But what I'm saying is simple, but is very profound. In, in, it's, it's, what makes it difficult for people is that they don't see through you know, how they repeat sin. Because it happens unconsciously, you see? The sin is being repeated, but they're sleeping in that moment. They're dumb, they're not present, they are involved in other things in the outside world. So the sin is being repeated, causing guilt, and they <clears throat> realize too late they wake up too late with the feeling of guilt. But we have to understand, you see, that guilt is not being perpetuated by itself. It happens because some active, some activeness, some action of mind that, that people do actively in their, in their inner life is, being, is, rep is, is nourishing uh, guilt, you see? It has to be nourished. If it's not nourished, it, it's dying. Everything in the inner world is dying if it's not nourished of, in, any, in, any, in any way, you see? But the nourishment of so many inner drives happen subconsciously or unconsciously. This is the problem, you see? If there were no one nourishing guilt, you know, guilt would just evaporate, you know? Uh, if no one, if there were no one nourishing fear, uh, the fear would just fade, uh, fade out. And I could give you one example after the other, you see. But the obstacle is always the same, that people do not see through the, what, what, is, what is happening, how am I actively, you see, perpetuating this uh, reality be it fear, be it guilt, or, or negativity of any kind, uh, negativity can even show up as positivity. Uh, you know, suffering can even show up as joy. It's not so simple. It's not so simple. But just understanding in this moment that this, that this basic truth, relative truth, that whatever repeats, repeats because there is an active investment, a subconscious investment, uh, perpetuating this, this reality, you see? So every relative reality 
pe people are living in, which is not truth itself, is being um, sustained by by this in this in this sense. You see. So there's a ta there's an attachment to the the guilt and the fear and that that is what perpetuates it, brings it back around. The attachment to suffering mm -hmm. is is has many flavors. Has many flavors yeah. and is much stronger than the attachment to not suffering. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it seems absurd. I mean. Um, but how can there be, you know, wh why, why should there be an attachment to suffering in human beings? Well, <laughs> um, this answer also needs a long time. But at the moment we just have to accept the fact that there is a strong attachment to suffering in human beings and that actually suffering is the strongest attachment human beings have. And this is beyond, you see, this is beyond uh, comfortable um, or uncomfortable um, positive or negative states of, of human beings which are just relative. I mean, a person in consciousness could, could lead a happy, a relatively happy life for years uh, and have a strong attachment to suffering, you see. Yes, I'm talking about giving up. Giving up this attachment. Stopping any fixation. Even with joy, you said suffering was c can come as joy. Something. Even with joy, yes. Oh no. Well, joy comes and goes, you see, yeah. but yeah. you cannot. If if there is a trying to to identify with joy. Um, in, which has a latent intention, of course, to distance from, I'm calling it not joy, you know, whatever state this might be, um, then what is actually happening is that you're not just, you have not just bought the joy, you have also bought the other side, you see. You, can, you cannot <coughs> go into a, a grocery store and ask just for joy, you see, you, the, you will always get both. Uh, but the, you, 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 you leave the, the store and you think you only got joy, but you know, you have something in, he, he puts something in your back, uh, <laughs> trousers in your back pocket, you know, stuffed something in your back pocket and you didn't realize, you see. So, you are forced to take, always take both. If you are attached to one side because this is your preference, this is only uh, a, an attachment to suffering in, in different, which has many different flavors and masks, you see. People don't see through that. 